Welcome to CAE Pilot Podcast, a podcast that brings together aviation professionals to discuss life as a pilot, training, and career advice. You can find us at cae.com forward slash CAE Pilot dash podcast or subscribe to our show on your audio podcasting platform of choice. You can also find our video podcast on our YouTube channel. Welcome to the CAE Pilot Podcast. My name is Patrick Botter, and today we have a great guest. Um, but before I introduce him, uh, you know, staying fit right now is a bit of a challenge. We've all been stuck in the house. We've all watched way too much Netflix. And let's be honest, the COVID-15 for many of us is a real thing. Staying healthy, both mentally and physically, is key to getting through this. And for pilots, that's a specific challenge. Um, the, the job of a pilot just involves irregular sleep patterns, a lack of sleep, obviously jet lag, not to mention crew meals. Um, and once you, you're on a layover, restaurants, um, your life basically is not conducive to staying fit. Um, and, you know, being comfortable in your own body is obviously important. Today we have Andrea Biundo with us. He's, um, he's a 787 pilot and uh, the owner of fit to fly and his business is oriented towards pilots, obviously, and anybody who uh, is on the go, cabin crew, business travelers, and it's all about staying fit. Um, so Andrea, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. You're welcome, Patrick. Thank you for guesting me. Andrea, we ask this of everybody. So before we get started, maybe tell us a little bit about how you came to become an airline pilot. Okay, interesting question. Uh, that's a childhood dream. Uh, I mean, I've been dreaming to become a pilot since I was uh, probably five or six years old as I grew up in a small town in the neighborhood of Palermo in uh, Sicily, Italy, uh, where basically uh, I, I've been living very close to the Palermo International Airport and uh, listening to the MD-80s from Alitalia taking off and landing all day long. I got passionate about it. You know, I started to be curious about it. And then I felt inside myself that feeling that that one could be my job. It became first my dream. And, and then, I mean, I, I grew up with the dream. And, you know, it just happened to, to become true. From listening to the MD-80s to a 787 is quite a leap. So how did you get into flying? What was, a, what was your career path? Yeah, that's actually uh, absolutely unbelievable because, um, uh, I mean, I still remember the time back 10 years ago when I was flying the Cessna 172 back in the United States. And I mean, I, all, all the path I've been, I've been going through in those 10 years and today sit, I mean, the privilege to sit on a 787 and fly long haul is something really, really, really incredible. I mean, I, I'm still so grateful for that because life gave me this opportunity. And uh, I mean, that, 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 that's basically happened in a, in a very simple way. My career is a very straightforward. I started flying in flying schools so like everybody else in the United States. Then I moved back to Europe where I did my conversion of the licenses. And I got the first job on a call uh, for a national careers in Northern Europe where I started to fly the 737 uh, classic Jurassic, amazing plane. I miss it so much. And, you know, then, I mean, getting on board on a 737 for me was a, a, lucky, a, a lucky time uh, in that moment because it was a very common rating. Uh, so to find jobs wasn't that difficult, let's say. So, I mean, uh, I've been uh, flying initially as a contractor so a bit here and a bit there, till finally I stabilized in some major alliance in the UAE. I've been living in Dubai for almost three and a half years. And then coming back to Europe, uh, keeping flying the 7 tree. And then I decided to make the move uh, to the long goal, as I was tired of, of <laughs> medium haul. <laughs> I decided to make this upgrade, let's say, into the long goal. And I got this amazing job uh, with Norwegian um, on the 7-8. That's shortly what happened. And have you been, have you been flying throughout the, uh, the pandemic? Uh, no, no, um, unfortunately not, uh, because uh, obviously with the, with the um, um, lockdown policies that pro have been in place in the United States, especially, uh, the airline decided to shut down the operation for a while. And uh, I mean, uh, we are expecting to start hopefully soon, according to you know, how the coronavirus is going on. And I mean, I've been, you know, just resting, relaxing and, you know, uh, tracking back my health, back to the level where I wanted to be. 
So what's great in your case is that you also have, uh, you're an entrepreneur and you have um, your business called Be Fit to Fly. And um, it, it, I guess it really mixes your two, your two passions. When did you realize that there was uh, an opportunity for um, a fitness company geared specifically to pilots, cabin crew, and um, road warriors? Well, I realized that quite actually quite a long time ago, uh, as uh, obviously myself being passionate about fitness and, you know, I've been going through my uh, fitness education and, uh, and stuff. I mean, I, I've been, uh, I've been, I knew already since a long time that in aviation, within the aviation community, the concept of wellness, the way, the way it's, it's, it's for us, not for everybody, but for us, uh, uh, nobody were, were, were talking about it. And uh, I always had this kind of, you know, tick in my mind and always thinking like, uh, should I do something? Should I do something? But obviously, you know, the, the rough schedules, uh, the, the working conditions, they were very tough because we were very, actually pretty busy before the pandemic. I mean, I have been postponing this, this, um, this my projects for years and years until, I mean, it, it came the coronavirus crisis. And uh, obviously, you know, uh, I took the, the, the leadership, the, the, the leads of it, out of it. And I said to myself, like, Andrea, can you change the problem? Can you go to fly tomorrow? And the answer was no. So obviously, how can, if I cannot change the problem, how can I at least change the conditions of this problem to, you know, to do something for, for others within the aviation community? And you know, I decided to um, do the next step uh, into, into, this, uh, this, into the business and you know, uh, give the birth to something uh, that could help other people because that's, was my, that, that's actually my main, my main first main mission is to help other people uh, to live better. So why not to help my uh, fellow aviators um, you know, to, to counteract the issues that come from uh, flying, that comes from uh, abrupt interruption of the flying operation, you know, why not? So I decided just to, you know, to kickstart in this pandemic moment, as I had a lot of time, and here we go. It's going ballistic. So the reaction has been good then? Yeah. That's, and, and I think people are, are really looking for that, uh, for that type of information right now. I think it's a, it's a time where we've all had the opportunity now, especially as we, this has uh, gone through, uh, has turned, you know, weeks have turned into months that we start to realize that, you know, it's time to get off the couch and to, to do something with our time. So I think it's, Absolutely. your timing was impeccable. Let's turn to your, uh, your fellow uh, pilots and uh, cabin crew. What would you say is, um, you know, some of the unhealthy um, habits that you see as a result of becoming a pilot? Well, uh, one of the, you know, becoming, be a pilot, being a pilot, being a flyer, but even uh, being involved in, uh, in a um, flying operation, so you might be an airport handler or a manager or check-in agent whatsoever, we work with very tight schedule. So we work with others. We work for others, and each one of us has a, has a very specific duty. So aviation is a very, let's say, sectorial business where everybody is a kind of human-made machine. So what's, what's, the, what's the problem coming out of, of it? It's, coming, it's, the, it's the stress, it's the fatigue, it's, uh, uh, and the most important is uh, the fact that uh, we aviators, as we are so focused in producing, in working, in completing the mission, whatsoever it is, we forget about ourselves. And every time we forget about ourselves, yes, we are the most important. Each one of us is more important than anybody else. That's, that's, that's the base of any, any society. If we forget about ourselves, we will forget about you know, the, the, the necessities that our body, our mind needs in order to cope with the stress and with those tough schedules as well. So at the end of the day, what's the result? The result is losing performances. So we lose performances at work. We don't produce the way we really would like. We lose the focus. We lose our health. And, you know, in general, we lose our well-being which is not only how we look outside, but it's also how we look inside, which is paramount for an aviator nowadays. 
So it sounds like it's a, you're describing a little bit of a vicious cycle, right? In your, in your desire to do your job so well, you don't take care of yourself, with, which, which creates this downward spiral, I guess, of yes. not being able to do your job carefully. Um, aviators are very generous people. That's, that's uh, the, in the aviation, if, if, you, you know it as well. We all aviators are very generous people. But because we are so generous and we always are keen to run the extra mile, we all forget about ourselves. That says to stop. That says to come to an end. So what do you suggest to people then to, to, to sort of get healthier within, within that context? What would you tell someone who's listening to you and says, oh my God, you know what? You're describing me. What would be your first piece of advice? Well, a straightforward uh, question uh, deserves a straightforward answer. So the first thing I will, I will suggest is to stop. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, stop. Stop and ask yourself, what am I doing? How do I feel? Ask to yourself those questions because you have the answer inside yourself. It's in there. It's inside you. And nobody else can give you this answer because it's inside you. So that's the very first thing I, I really suggested to everybody to do. And then once you clearly admit it to yourself which one is your problem, take action. And take action today, not tomorrow, because procrastinating is just make it make the thing worse. That's, that's as simple as that. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that because, you know, I'm inventing, I invented it. It's just the way it is. If we procrastinate, we don't get it done today. We not, we're never going to get it done. So it's do, do this, ask this to yourself. What am I doing? Okay, so let's make this real for people, right? And I know that I've, I've done this myself. You know, I'm lying on the couch, I'm watching the 96th episode of whatever I'm watching on Netflix. I've got my cookies and my chips and everything there, and I feel good about it. You know, this is the way life is right now, and this is how I feel comfortable. How do I break out of that? The first thing, uh, I mean, uh, there is nothing bad in uh, sitting on the sofa and watching TV. There is nothing bad in watching Netflix. There is nothing bad in, uh, in uh, eating popcorn. Yeah, there is nothing bad in eating popcorn. However, this has to be not uh, an ordinary life, but has to be a price, you know, that you give to yourself because you have done something good for you. So whenever you say, Patrick, okay, myself, Patrick, I have done something good for to, uh, today for myself. Do I deserve to sit half an hour on the sofa and watch a movie with my wife? Do I deserve it? Yes or no? And if the answer is no, take your ass out of the, co- of the sofa and go to the gym. Just do it. There is, no, there is no other way around. There is no magic stick that now, you know, Andrea comes to you and say, you know, Patrick, go to the gym. It's not going to happen. So this is something that you really need to want. You need to admit to yourself, I'm doing wrong. I'm just doing wrong. I'm, I'm threatening myself. Stop it. As simple as that. So now I'm going to feel like I don't need to go onto the couch or I'm going to use it as a prize, as you say. Um, instead of going to the gym, though, I can start by going for a walk, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And... Tell me how physical fitness improves mental well-being, because right now there's a lot of discussion on mental well-being. You know, we've like myself, I've been working at home for almost six months now. It feels a little bit like Groundhog Day. Um, I try to get out every day and do a little bit of exercise, but it's, you know, sometimes we're overwhelmed. Just talk a little bit about how physical exercise improves mental health. Absolutely. It is scientifically proved that uh, physical exercises releases endorphins. And the endorphins is, are those hormones that, that make, self, make us feel good, make us feel happy, make us feel focused. So the more we train, the more we, the, with regularity, without too much stress, without, you know, we are not going to become athletes. But if we give to our body, you know, a daily dose of exercise, Whatever is going to be, wherever you like, the body is going to like it. The body is going to love it. And the response 
is that your, your endorphins quantity will increase dramatically and you will feel so happy, you will feel so good. That's why every time you do, for example, you go for a run or you go for a, for a strength training section or whatever, you just go playing beach ball, you feel good. You feel tired, but you feel good. And do you, have you ever experienced, for example, uh, that feeling that after sports, you don't feel hungry anymore? So you've been feeling hungry all day long and you don't know anymore what to eat. Finally, you go for an exercise for an hour outside. You come back and you just don't want to eat anything because the body is so satisfied. The brain is sending, you know, uh, electrical impulse to, our, to our, our stomach saying like, hey, I am satisfied. I'm so happy. I don't need food. I'm happy. So that's already how to trick, tip and tips and tricks, how to tricks out the the anger, you know, do physical activity because the more you do it, the less angry you will feel. And I think there's a lot of emotions, right? Whether it's anger, anxiety, stress, I think that exercise will help all of them. But the one, the one common thread that you've said here is that we've got to get up and get moving. Um, yes. So what would you say are the basics to making that happen? Or what would you suggest as, uh, you know, for someone who's, been sitting around, maybe hasn't been as active as they usually are, how would you get started? Immediately give yourself a goal. Give yourself a task, but nothing complicated, nothing unrealistic. Use the smart model. It's full the internet about it. If you digit on Google smart model, there will be tons and tons of information so you can read in order to, you know, educate yourself on the kind of philosophy and mindset which then is applied on business, is applied on everything in life. And it's basically, I can basically, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, squeeze it for you in a basic definition. Set simple goals, realistic, authentic, and achievable. And in order to make sure that you're going to make it, set the time. So if tomorrow you decided to go for a walk from, let's say, 8 to 9, it is, you know, a simple thing, it's a simple action, it's a simple goal you can do. Yes, you can. Can you go uh, for a walk if it's raining? Of course you can. Can you go for a walk if, I don't know, um, the street is closed? Yes, you can take another street. There is, there is nothing can, can, you know, stop you apart from an emergency. So it is an achievable goal. Yes. It is realistic. Yes. Can you walk? For sure. So you can do it. It's an authentic thing. Yes. So you are not, you know, thinking to go and walk 55 kilometers. You are thinking about probably having a walk around your block with your dog, as simple as that. And obviously, do you have a time? Yes, because you have decided that from eight to nine, this time will be dedicated to yourself. And it must be your time. So you have to make sure that your wife, your kids, they understand that. Because I know the feeling. I know the feeling of, you know, being at home for many months, smart working or whatsoever. Your kids are around, your wife is around, you know, you are not used to that. And life gets complicated because now you need to share the space with the, your family members 24 hours a day and not anymore just like a few days per month, like usually happen to pilots in particular. And you feel stressed. You want a time for yourself, but you know, your family won't sign from you. So how can you solve this problem out? Just make sure that you speak with your family members and say, you know what, you know, I would like to have two hours per day for myself for my peace of mind, for going to the gym, for a football uh, game with my friends. Everything which involves body movement. We got to move. So what you're, you know, right now we're talking about, uh, for the most part, you know, we're at home. Uh, we have the time. We have the space to exercise. It's, uh, it's maybe a bit easier. Now let's, let's think about the pilot who's now maybe putting on their uniform for the first time in a little, little while and it's a bit snugger. Um, what do you suggest for pilots who, you know, who are on the go? We've, we talked about all of the challenges 
um, that they face. So what, what do you suggest to, you know, your colleagues uh, when, when they are flying? What do you suggest for them to keep fit? Well, I've been writing down here five sim- simple points. Everybody can do that. I'm going to read them out for you. Cool. First, drink more water. Now, the, pe- the pilots will tell you like, but I drink enough. Hey, I cannot go to the loo every half an hour. I have to fly. No, it's not written anywhere that you cannot go to the loo every half an hour. It's a physiological need. You must go to the loo every half an hour. So you got to drink. There are no excuses. The problem is how much. An average male, an average male which needs to lose weight, for instance, needs to drink an amount of water between three and four and a half liters per day. I drink around six and a half liters per day and I don't have to lose any weight. Just to give you an example. So, guys, drink. Drink, drink. Uh, on average, my suggestion to you will be drink around one liter per, of water per hour. If you cannot make it, half liter of water per hour, per hour is also fine. And at the end of the day, you guys will feel the difference because flying dehydrates. So the dehydration pro, um, process creates brain confusion, impaired vision, fatigue, stress, skin dehydration, and stuff like that. So a lot of issues that then, you know, they, they make your journey toward your flight way, way more complicated than it could be actually in reality. The second thing, you know, time to time, let's say every one hour, ask to your colleague to take the controls, stand up and stretch yourself. Stretch your chest, do some small movement with your shoulders in order, you know, to relax the neck, to relax the fascial muscles, and also your lower back. So you can do some movement up and down, you know, and stretch your legs. It's going to take only two minutes, no more than that. And then sit again. This is going to help your blood the circulation to flow better because obviously the sitting position that we assume in the aircraft is, uh, is an unnatural position, especially when it's prolonged. And it's also going to help our muscles not to, um, um, in, in, you know, have cramps. So we want to avoid cramps. So we drink enough water, we stretch ourselves here and there once in a while, and it's already 80% of, the, of, the, of your job. Third thing, do not eat crew meal. Stop it. It's not good. It is comparable to McDonald's. So every time you're eating a, a crew meal, it's the same thing you're eating a two and a half thousand McDonald's meal. Junk food. But not because uh, the food uh, that is in crew meals is bad. It's because of the t- treatment process that this food undergoes before coming into your legs. And it's very well known in the aviation industry that our crew meals are completely full feed of fatty oils in order to, you know, uh, keep the food uh, um, fresh and uh, usable in a longer period. So to avoid deterioration, they put conservants. And those conservants are, is a layer of fat that every time you heat up the meal, it melts and it gives that nice, tasty, extremely salty juice, which is at the bottom of your plate. That's poison. Prepare at home your food. Prepare for a whole week. If you know you have a schedule, if you are a medium, medium, uh, medium hole pilot, so you are flying, you have a roster for a whole month. Okay, you have some standby, some flight can change whatsoever. We all know that. But if, you're, if you are a medium hole pilot, you have time to self-prepare at home. So you can dedicate two hours of your time during the week to prepare the whole food for the whole week. So prepare an X amount of chicken, for instance. Prepare an X amount of salads or whatsoever. Something that you know that it takes time to prepare it, you can do it in advance and freeze it. And then at the day of your flight, if you want to prepare a fresh salad, it's two minutes to do. You put everything in your nice food bag, 
you carry it at work with you. There is nothing bad that is written anywhere that you cannot take the food with you. There are no restrictions. There is no problem. Just take it with you. Warm it up in the, in the aircraft oven and eat your own food. So uh, point number four, avoid at all the cost eating nuts. One of the favorite food for pilots, it's nuts. Inside the bag, the backpack of a pilot, there will be their license, there will be their uh, you know, headset, whatever, there will be also a pack of nuts. Most of them, they like mixes, which is even worse. So why nuts are not good for flying? Because they are a very high dense calorie food. It means that in 20 grams of nuts, which is barely, you know, the quantity you can put in your hand, the amount of calories is enormous. It's more than 200, 250 calories. So if you are taking nuts from your pilot bag and eating one by one, after one hour, you ate 300 grams back. That's more than 1,000 calories. And then finally, the fifth point, exercise regularly, as we said before, at least three to four times a week. What's my suggestion? This is based on experience, it's based on my own experience, in other people's experience and my clients' experience. My suggestion is for aviators, the core training you can do in order to develop an healthier living is strength. We need muscles. We need to be strong. We don't need to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Almost nobody want to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, I would like, but I know I can. <laughs> I'm not going to get there. But it doesn't matter, you know. We need to be strong because the biggest is the amount of muscles we have in our body. The faster our metabolism goes, the more we can eat. I mean, it sounds like weird, but, you know, if I have a metabolism of 2,000, basic metabolism of 2,000 calories and you have a basic metabolism of 1,200 calories, I exercise and you don't exercise. Obviously, I'm going to eat more than you because otherwise I'm going to go on a deficit. If I don't lose, want to lose weight, what's the point? I'm going to eat more than you. I'm going to enjoy. I'm going to enjoy. You're going to starve. So the healthier you are, the more muscle you have, the more you can enjoy the foods you yes. enjoy. Yes. And obviously, you will live longer. You're, uh, I mean, uh, I can tell you out of experience, flying long goal. Sometimes I stay up to 14 hours sitting on an airplane. And the movement that I do is from the cockpit to the bunk in order to get my four hours of rest. And uh, I can tell you that whenever I, with my body, with the fact that I do strength training, I go to the gym with regularity, I am strong. I don't have the same problems of, of many other colleagues. I don't fall asleep. I don't feel fatigue. I mean, I just don't feel fatigue. So this, the fatigue is an issue in aviation. Everybody says like, oh, goodness, you know, I'm fatigued. That's not possible. I, why I don't feel fatigued? Because I'm special? No. If I can do it, you can do it. Everybody can do it. You just got to get strong. You got to get your metabolism speed up a little bit. You got to lose that extra weight because it's not good, because it's going to affect your, your cardiovascular system. It's going to affect your working performance, your social performance. You just don't like yourself. So it's going to affect also your sociality within the people. The most important is to set a goal that you can achieve. And if you have a dream body, go for it. You will do it. You will reach it. And the dream body is not my dream body. If I like to have the abs, but you don't like to have the abs, there is nothing bad on that. But if you feel good in you, that's important. And then associate a little bit of cardio to the strength training. What pilots and cabin crews do the most? I see it myself. We arrive in the hotel. Okay, guys, what are you going to do? I'm going to the gym. Uh, what are you going to do? Ah, I'm going to run. I'm going to do an hour of cardio, you know, because I need to lose weight and I need to, you know, um, I have too much water. No. Why you all do so much cardio? It's an extra stress for your body. It's an extra stress for your cardiovascular system. You've been flying for many hours. You've been sitting also for many hours. Too much cardio. 
it's not going to help. It's going to deplete your energy furthermore, and you're going to go on, you know, over, even over training. You risk over training without even training. The cardio is, is excellent if it's done with moderation. So if you associate it to the strength training, it's good enough. And then if you want to get an extra hour of run during the week, go for it because it's beneficial. Not, if you want to go for a ri- bike ride, do it. But get stronger. Now let's talk about the pitfall of any pilot or cabin crew. You get to, you're on a layover. You, the crew is going out for dinner. They're having drinks before. Um, you've probably done a little bit of walking. Maybe give us an idea of what a healthy layover looks like. The healthy layover or the healthiest layover is the one you can enjoy. And you know if you can do it. Because if you have been doing your homework, there is nothing to worry about. When I go on layover myself, I don't exercise. I don't. I enjoy. I sightsee. I go to the beach. I discover new places. I spend time with my crew. I take the best out of it because I know I did my homework. But if you know you didn't do your homework, just don't worry. It's, we are living in 2020. There's plenty of options. So if you want to go and enjoy a, you know, a night out with your colleagues, just do it. Just take, treat it as a cheat meal. We all need to cheat meal. You have to cheat meal. I have to cheat meal. Everybody is, you know, it's almost mandatory to cheat meal. So just do it and have fun, enjoy. But try, you know, to find the time within this layover to sleep your seven to nine hours. My suggestion out of it is do not arrive at destination if you're flying long goal and go immediately to sleep following your home country time zone because that's not going to be good for you. I suggest you, again, out of experience, and I've seen many, many people changing their lives doing that, adapt immediately to the local time zone. So if you're flying from Rome to Los Angeles, it's around nine hours difference. Just land in Los Angeles, go to the hotel, Get yourself a shower, get yourself refreshed, wear a bagging suit, and run to Santa Monica on the beach. <laughs> so, what you do the beach. So, what you're saying is, I won't find Andrea in the uh, hotel gym. No, <laughs> <laughs> never, oh. never. You well, will find me in Santa Monica on the beach. <laughs> well, listen, you're giving me dreams all of a sudden of Santa Monica on the beach somewhere. I think we all wish that, uh, yeah. or we all hope anyway, we can be. Um, very soon. Listen, it's going to happen. Uh, I, yes, I'm, I'm confident it will. I think that at this point, though, we're all just very much looking forward to it. Um, here, let's, do, let's bust some myths, if that's okay with you, about pilot fitness. Is it possible to be fit as a pilot? Yes, absolutely. If I can do it, you can do it. Most pilots typically have a very still lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle. Um, lots of down hours with little exercise. True or false? Absolutely, yes. Being fit as a pilot involves hours of training every day to compensate for an unhealthy lifestyle. Absolutely not. There is no way you can compensate. The only way you can do it is take action and do something for yourself. You can compensate what you miss when you sleep. You can compensate your lost uh, training hours. You just have to do it. Putting exercise into your daily lifestyle requires discipline and determination to make it happen. Yes. Like everything in life, discipline and method is uh, paramount. And when you start exercising, you should set yourself goals that are difficult to attain. Never. Just simple, realistic, achievable goals. Go, go by goal. And whenever you reach the first goal, immediately have your mindset setting the next and go for it. You will make it. Let let me ask you this uh, question as we close out here. Um, You talked in the beginning about your your path to becoming a pilot. Um, And you talked about a lot of changes, waiting for the right opportunity, upgrading. Um, There's a lot of people right now who are listening to us who, you know, are they're, you know, they're wondering, what do I do now? You know, we've got pilots who are maybe looking for the next opportunity, waiting to go back to work. 
um, and others who are in flight school right now, what would your, what would your suggestion be um, or what would you say to encourage people right now who are looking at a, a, you know, a career in aviation? Keep following your dreams. Do not let anybody distract you from that, even the coronavirus. Do not let everything is transitory. Everything is going to change. And if you have a dream, if you want to become a pilot, we need you. We need new pilots. Aviation will need thousands of pilots in the next 10 to 15 years. So please keep pursuing your goals. And I'm sure you're going to make it. You're going to be all right. Everything is going to be okay. And uh, I mean, don't quit. That's, that's, that's the most important thing I think I, I, can, I can say. And aviation is an amazing world. It's an amazing community. It is a fairly small world, but it is amazing. So we welcome anybody, and a passion, especially if you are passionate, you're going to find your way in aviation. Every road, every journey is very, very singular. No, no one of us have done the same path. We all come from different ways and different perspectives and different past, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we all have a common thing. We love what we are doing. It's our lifestyle. So keep pursuing your goal and the best of luck. So I'm going to ask you to share one other secret. We've been talking now for about, what, you know, 40, 50 minutes. How do you stay so positive all the time? Because you're clearly a very positive guy. So how do you, what's your secret to staying positive? You have to do what you love. No matter what you love, do it. Even if it seems stupid, do it. I do everything what, it, what, what I love. I love helping other people. It's, that's probably come from my, from, from my parents' education. I don't know from where it's coming from, but I love to help other people. So whenever I, I do it, I feel so good. And whenever I might, the feedback from these people is positive, it make my day. So I can find more reasons in my life to think positive than negative. And I always tend to see the glass half full rather than half empty. That's my kind of you know, life vision, the way I see the life. And I mean, that's, I also have a lot of weaknesses. I also, like every other person, you know, uh, I make mistakes and, uh, and I, but I have no regrets. That's what I, what I really hope and, uh, and I wish to everybody. Do not have regrets. So glass half full and six liters a day. That's what we have to remember. Always. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I wish you the very best uh, with your business. I think that uh, it's a much needed um, and will be greatly appreciated tool for, um, for everyone. And uh, I wish you the very best when you get back to, uh, to, I guess, your first love of being in the flight deck of that 787 uh, flying off to beautiful destinations around the world. Thank you so much, Patrick. I really appreciate this invitation. It was a very valuable time also for me. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed to listen and to probably learn something new. Um, you can reach me out if you need me. You can, uh, you can ask me any questions you want. And... Uh, I'm on the internet, so everybody use it. Just Google me and you're going to find me and just reach me out. And I wish you all good luck. And again, uh, that's, uh, your company's name is Be Fit to Fly. Um, so you can check out uh, what Andrea's got going on there. And remember to go to airside.aero for lots of great information and tools for pilots. Thanks a lot. Take care. CAE Pilot Podcast is brought to you by CAE, the global leader in training for the civil aviation, defense and security, and healthcare markets. For more information, check out CAE.com.